Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vlogmas day six. I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. I got one suggestion on my video yesterday where I asked like, what would you like to see? So I'm gonna fulfill that. I'll tell you about that in a second. And if you have suggestions or things, requests of what you'd like to see, please let me know. So far today, been up, we've done a bit of work, had breakfast, we've had the dog, you saw all of that. And then I, after breakfast, checked over. So my morning work was very boring. I didn't film any of that. That was all this tax thing that I've been working on. Still trying to solve like API connections and boring stuff like that. But um, after breakfast, what you just saw was me checking over some games. So yesterday, after I talked to you, it turned out that my student who was supposed to have an online lesson because they were a bit sick, they got more sick. So they couldn't have their online lesson. So I had a bit of time there. And then I had another student who was sick, so I had a bit more time, which meant I was able to pretty much finish off a set of games that I've been working on since a couple of weeks ago in bits and pieces, um, which is for next year. So it's a bit of a tease, but these are games. Basically, I've done one for each unit in Piano Safari 1, and they're just like a quick, easy way to review concepts covered so far in the book. And it's easy to spot which one is which because they are animals that are like the animal techniques in those units. So it starts with a lion and then there's a giraffe. So it's just for pianists, for our teachers, I think it's going to be really handy to have like a quick go-to game. It takes like two to five minutes and reviews some of those things. Um, yeah, so... Teachers outside of Piano Safari, like who don't use Piano Safari, you'll still be able to use it. It's still a great beginner review game, all of them are, but especially useful for those in Piano, uh, with students in Piano Safari. So this morning I just checked those off just now. Um, they will still go through two more rounds of proofing, but that's my check on them to just like, okay, I haven't missed anything really obvious. <laughs> and then, um, G, my husband, will print them out and assemble them. He does that part of the job now. That was me for many years, but he does that. So he'll print them and cut them up and put them together and take the photos. And then one member of the team will review them soon. And the other member will review them just before they go out to members. So yeah, we do our best not to have any typos or anything. Although, of course, sometimes things slip through. That's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, that's been the morning so far. Now, the comment yesterday, the special request, was for a little tour of my studio area. So I'm going to do that. There is a tour here on the YouTube channel which shows, like, I'd say probably in more detail the different areas of my room. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just take you on, like, a walkthrough tour. So I'm sorry if the camera work is a little bit shaky. I don't have a gimbal or anything like that. I'm just going to do my best to keep it steady and show you through the space and I'll talk through it as I go. It's not super fancy. Like I love my, my teaching space. It's fancier than I used to have. So I don't want to downplay it, but it's not like I'm not in a commercial location. This is based out of my home. There are bits and pieces where it has to be multifunctioning. So um, yeah. It is what it is, but I'll show you around. And after the tour, I probably won't see you until a little bit later when we're getting ready for the YouTube show. Hopefully at some point in there, you can cross your fingers for me <laughs> because by the time you watch this, the result will already be true, but you don't know it yet and I don't know it yet. Um, a friend of mine might be able to help me with part of my tax problem where I have to combine two CSV files and I don't have the technology to do it. A friend of mine might be able to help me. And if she does that, she's going to save us hours and hours of work. So fingers crossed for that. And let's go on our tour. Right. So this is the start <laughs> of our tour. This is where we're coming in the front door. OK, so the stairs are there and directly in front of us is the waiting room. So I'm going to go there first show you a little bit. So students generally come in this way, come into the waiting room. Right now it has our Christmas tree there, as you've seen. And through that door at the back is the bathroom. So students generally go, not generally, always go straight away to wash their hands. So that's why they always come in through the waiting room. 
even if they are not early. <laughs> so they go to wash their hands. If they are early, they just take a seat here. If they're um, a younger child, the parent has to be sitting with them. But if they're an older child, they can wait there by themselves. Over here in the waiting room is where we keep all the games for easy access for all the teachers in the studio. Obviously they take them to students' homes as well when they're working there. So I'll give you a brief overview of the categories. I believe I've shown this before. But terms one, two, three, so there's the levels, tones, semitones, accidentals. Give you a little view. If you want this in depth, you can let me know. But this is just a quick overview of my categories. These evolve over time, usually during the summer. Well, you can't really see those ones from your angle, but they're under there. Um, generally, over the summer, I'll take everything out <laughs> often. Um, and have to create new categories like there used to be just intervals one and two and now there's intervals one two three because I have a copy of every game we ever created so it's a lot 400 500 now um can't remember there's more up there so generally the ones we use less often like the history ones I usually use those at groups only so I just have them up there and then we've got a few general teaching type books that obviously the teachers here can borrow a few game bits that don't fit into folders and my old flute that's just there's no other place to put that uh, the t-shirts are in that box our studio t-shirts so if someone needs to change a size it's nice and easy and then over there we do have a digital piano for students to warm up on and then our challenge board is above there. I'm not going to go too close to that because obviously student names, even though it's only first names. I'll take it a little bit down here. I'm not going to go into the bathroom, but here is our member map. This is where I keep this. So I have pins for everywhere we have members. Many of those areas we have multiple members and I put bigger pins when we've lots and lots of members like in a city, but it's just something fun. That's really for me to enjoy because I like seeing all the places that teachers are using our materials to make their lessons more fun. So that's the waiting room. Let's go up the stairs now. So we're taking a sort of student journey here as they would take. Um, yeah, they'd wash their hands, wait if they need to wait if they're too early and then go up. That's Tofu's harness there, but um, also a coat hanger. And they go up the stairs. This is quite narrow. So these houses were built in the 1930s. And ours is quite modified at this stage, but the stairs are the original, so it's quite, um, they were built originally as council houses. Um, anyway, I'll talk more about that later. Up the stairs, and this is just our landing area. A few Christmas decorations over there. And then this is the second teaching room, so the one you don't normally see that much. These are little coat hangers from Ikea, which I think are fun. My mum actually bought those and then realised she didn't have a good spot for them. So she gave them to me. Okay, so this is the second teaching room where the other teachers teach when they're working from here. And then other days they go to students' homes. But there's one teacher here every day, essentially. And we have our Kawhi Novus Upright Hybrid Piano here. Uh, so that's the NV five I sometimes get them mixed up nv5 and it's the window obviously out to the front um, i have a secondary screen on top of the piano so that's connected to the laptop there for doing things like flashcards and on-screen games and when one student is online and the other is in person so they can easily see their buddy and then we have this little desk organizer where i generally i leave stuff all the pages there are things uh, I'm giving to teachers for specific students, sheet music, stuff like that. And then over in the corner there, that's the games table. So there are just cushions underneath there. And then there's some storage at the bottom um, that has our mini musician supplies and crayons and general stuff. And then a staff blanket there in the corner. And uh, we have our foam mats for, again, for mini musicians, for them to all sit on the floor and cushions for sitting around the game table. And up here are some of our books. Really the best book catalog is just in my brain. I know which ones are in which room. So generally other teachers don't have to find them. I just find it for them. 
but of course if they see something that they know they need they can grab it for themselves and down here in this corner over here is the books that are just teacher copies basically that they have on hand and the sight reading cards there and then some more toys and games up there and the whiteboard that's pretty much it for this room so yeah students are either in here or in my room which is over here so i have the books i'm referring to over there sorry there might be an extra noise in this room it's got a, a the boiler in it which is why i made it my room because that's a bit annoying but i'm pretty used to it um so up here we have my Yes I Realise Ridiculous collection of Beanie Babies. This is not all of them, but this is some of them. <laughs> I have all the ones that are relevant to Pianist Fairy down here. So it's just something I find fun. Um, that's Charlie Chipmunk. This is Fred the Fish, in my studio anyway. This is um, the giraffe, the lion, weird bird, the ostrich. Um, that stands in for a monkey please excuse that and um, this is Steve who many of you will know he's one of the oldies this is a zebra the tree frog I have a butterfly instead of a soaring bird at the moment and um, yeah he's just for fun and a flamingo of course and then these are some of my older ones up here basically these are original guys from when I was eight or nine and used to collect beanie babies over here is where I store my grand staff floor blanket and as I said, teacher copies basically of books and stuff I have to give out is down here, as well as just books I'm looking through. So yes, there is a bit of mess there. And then this is, you know, another reason why this is my room. There's a lot going on. So this is a space where the old boiler used to be and it's kind of makeshift shelves. And um, it's as tidy as it can be really. I've got my game tokens there. I've got the cloths for tidying up. And then in this basket or my pen basket technology, hand drums, stuff like that. If you're a bit confused about the shape of this, these are folding chairs. So these we use for um, con the small concerts that we do here. We have these folding chairs for that. And this is the most convenient place to store them. <laughs> so that's just where they go. And then the basket kind of fits in as if it's a shelf, but yeah, let's call it creative, right? And then this is kind of my workstation. So. As with most things in this house, this does two jobs. So it is during teaching, but you might think it's a bit extreme with the two screens and everything for teaching. I wouldn't really need that if it was just for during my lessons, but it is also for working during the day. So in the morning, I work in our outside office in the garden, and then I switch to work in here, and G works in the other office. So that's just the system that works for us. But this also doubles up as our games table. So the reason I have the screen set up like this, I'll try and show you a bit. I won't be able to show you the process properly, but that gives you some idea. It folds back. So that's how we use that bench for games. I have an extra stool here, and then I stay sitting in my chair when we're playing games. Sometimes we play them on the floor if we need extra space. That's just the window outside, a few bits and pieces sitting on the window. Still the things I need all the time, basically. Um, and then lots of book storage, bookshelves over there. I also have things, by the way, in that bench you saw, which is for sitting at games. All my piano sprite books are in there. And then my beautiful Kwai NV10. Whenever I mention this, people say, why didn't you get the NV10 S or whatever it is, the newer one? I'm like, because I got it before that existed. <laughs> and I also have my beautiful bench I didn't show you the one in the other room but it's the same I love this thing it's a hydraulic lift so it's just so much faster to go up and down versus rolling up and down and when you teach a lot of young kids that's helpful it's also extra wide which makes it a lot more comfortable for playing duets especially with adult students and then my secondary piano is another kawaii I can't remember off the top of my head which model this is um but yeah it's a kawaii uh, there it is, CA49. CA stands for Concert Artist, I think. That's just an extra light for when I'm filming videos. And some lovely stuff on my whiteboard over there. Um, and yeah, you'll see I always have the camera set up, so I use that for filming things like our scale sync videos. 
and for also for online lessons so I can show an overhead view. So another double purpose thing. Um, and it connects to my computer, obviously. And then that is Peter. His full name is Peter Lala von Peterson. Great name. Um, and you'll see there's a few bits and pieces. It's not fully tidy. There's some stuff in the corner there. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. Hello, lovely teachers. Back on again. This is going to be the last clip of today, I think. It's going to be easier to upload this before I start teaching. So it's around uh, midday now, a bit after. And we have to start getting ready for the show soon the YouTube live show. So I'll see some of you there, which is kind of funny. Probably both things will happen almost at the same time by the time I upload this, edit it and upload it. But yeah, on the show today, I have an interview with, that I recorded with Tim Topham that I'm sharing. We recorded it because when I do the show, it, he's asleep in Australia. So time zone wise, it made sense to record it. So that's all prepared. All I have to do is set up that in the software and make sure everything's running okay. So it should be quite a quick setup today, which is great. So I have an hour and a half, a couple of hours maybe, to do a bit more work and get a few more things done. I've been doing some more of my fun bat stuff that I know you love hearing about. But the good news is, I told you to cross your fingers and it clearly worked even though you weren't there to do it. That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, my wonderful friend... <laughs> who is a scientist and just an amazing human, but she's a scientist and therefore she uses a software co called R for that and for her sciencing. <laughs> and she was able to take the data and combine it for me, which is just wonderful. I only had to tidy the spreadsheet a tiny bit and now it's like ready to upload and I'm so happy that saved an enormous amount of work and it was gonna be work that G was gonna have to do because it was a lot of like data entry and stuff. Um, that I wouldn't have had time to do on time. So she saved him an enormous, very boring job. And he said he's going to buy her an extra Christmas present. <laughs> so we're very happy with that. And it all worked out. Today, later on after the show, I have a few students, obviously. I teach today. So I have a quite advanced student who's studying for their grade eight exam. So that's an hour lesson. And then I have a set of buddy lessons. Um, so two two more students, but and then a buddy lesson in between. So yeah, it's a nice day of teaching. It's reasonably light, really. Um, I did that on purpose because it's the normal day. I have the YouTube show. So I start a little bit later and then still finish at seven. So the work I'm gonna do before the show is what I wanted to share with you, which is this guy. So some of you will know the Thinking Theory series, which is a, a set of workbooks that I have. I created it in 2016, only I'm sure of that because it's a copywriter's on the page. It's 2016 when I created the set, which is um, prep level and then level one, level two and level three. And each one has a plus book, which is like extra reinforcement pages, just worksheet pages for each book. So there's like a main book, which could be the only book you need. You go through that. There's a review along the way. And then there's a plus book which is designed for if a student needs extra review of that before they move on to the next level they can do that. So I designed that series to be basically on a spiral learning model because that's what I was so frustrated with not finding in the theory books I had been using was I'm sure you've encountered this in your own studies as I prepared for all my theories ex exams these are the books I used where they give you a concept like Here's how you create a melodic minor scale, okay? They present it to you, and then they have like two to five pages of review of that one concept. And then it never comes back again for the rest of the book. And I'm just like, why? So then when I use those books with students, I have to assign like a couple of the exercises, mark them and say, and then a couple of exercises from the next chunk, and then we go back around and back around. So my books don't do that. They do a little bit review and then comes back later in the book. That's the idea. And there are some other things that are different about them, like there are videos to go along with them and, and so students can figure things out by watching the videos at home rather than us presenting every idea to them. They still have us to help them figure it out, but it gives them an extra opportunity for flipped learning. So those books, prep one, two, and three, 
I created back into 2016. And I thought shortly after that, I would probably go on and create book four and maybe book five. And I knew what I wanted in book four, like right from the beginning. But then in 2017, I launched the Vibrant Music Teaching Membership. And that took over my life in the best possible way <laughs> so that I never got back to Thinking Theory 4 until I started working on it again in 2021, I think. It might have even been 2020. And did a little bit and then it got put on hold again. It's just one of those projects that keeps ending up on the back burner. And then I completely finished it. The start of this year or was it last year? And it got to the stage of, okay, I need to double check everything, proof everything, and then create the American edition. So it got to that stage. Definitely at the latest, it was earlier this year, like March or something. And I didn't pick it up again. So it's one of my goals for December to hopefully get it out into the world or at least get it almost out into the world. That's what we're aiming for. So with that in mind, um, this has already been reviewed several times. So it's been reviewed by me. I've used it with students. I've had someone on the team go through it and review and mark um, errors. And so it's kind of getting to the final review stage where now I am going to, I've printed it out because I'm going to go through it as if I'm a student and do all the exercises and try and review everything again. I've already done that once on the iPad. I want to do it in print now. And then, yeah. After that happens, so hopefully I'll get most of that, oh, we'll see how I go. It is book four, it's not like the exercises are all completely non-thinking <laughs> as they are in like reviewing a prep level book or something. Um, but I'll see how far I get with that today. And then the goal is to get the US edition set up. So this is the edition which uses the words like crotchet and quaver and is also in A4 format and then I with these books, I also do them in letter format. So they print nicely on letter paper and with all the US terms, quarter note, half note, whole note, measure instead of bar, all those differences. So yeah, that's the next step. Wish me luck with proofreading it. And hopefully over the course of Vlogmas, it will get at least near to completion. I'm ready to send a batch to the printers and set up the digital editions and you can follow along with that. So that's going to be it for today. I'm going to leave it there so that I have space to do all of those things. But again, let me know if you have special requests, if there's things you want me to do, like today's tour around the studio was a request from yesterday. Um, and let me know if you're enjoying the videos. Let me know, yeah, what you want to see next. And I'll see you tomorrow.